All right, well, we got us another victim of uh, outboard abuse. I got that terminology from Cody Bass. He's the one always saying, we got us another victim of uh, outboard abuse. So right. I want to credit him for that because it's so true. All right, we got us another one that has fell prey to the victim of outboard abuse. So we're going to try and see if we can't figure out what's going on with it. See if we can't get it fixed for the guy. Uh, it's an old brown stripe 50 horsepower. It's the variety that doesn't have the tilt and trim, but it does have a stator trigger switch box, power pack. And he's got fuel leaking out of the bottom bowl, bowl. but uh, he doesn't, uh, he says it doesn't run. So we don't know if it's got spark, it's got compression, we don't know anything. Okay, so we got a few different things. I got my tool bag out here. Um, got my remote deal, which I know I would, one of these days, I'm gonna get a little push button one. This is something I made for remote starting. Uh, got a timing light out here. I've got my little spark checker out here. And uh, so I got a just a wrench out here to remove the spark plugs. Um, he has an onboard charger. So I've got that plugged up to here. And we want to pull our fuel connector. All right, so we're going to pull our fuel connector. And then we're going to open this guy up. And we'll take the lid off of this. And then I've got my little test tank out here. I've got it water filled up so the next thing I'm gonna do is take all these plugs out and we got auto light plugs uh, so anyway we're gonna have to hopefully that didn't the thing I want to do is I'm gonna see if I got spark see if I got any compression so I'll get my compression gauge out here and Go through this guy and see what kind of compression we got. Yeah, not super tight. Yeah, I <laughs> never run auto light plugs. Uh, unless somebody disagrees with me, but it's not a good plug. It looked very oily. Check these to see if they're firing. I'll see if I got some used ones. That one's oily, a lot of gas. Makes me wonder if it's even firing. That one doesn't look like it had any fuel in it at all. So yeah, for this bottom wood, I always use this wrench because I can get down in there. And it was barely in. And that's got some, looks like some fuel on it. So I don't know. I don't know if they're any good or not. I'll check. All right, I got my compression tester on the top cylinder. I've got my, my little spark checker. And uh, I have to get the key and set up my remote so I can remote start it. I'll put the key on the ignition on on into the run position and then we'll do a compression test and uh, got a little white pen I can mark each one of these and mark the number yeah this is what this has progressed to had to remove the carbs so I got spark although the bottom spark plug seems 
a little weak. Um, in general, I might recommend replacing spark plug wires, but got compression. Top cylinder was 135, the second one was 137, and then we ran in a snag. So number three, unfortunately, needs the threads cleaned up. And uh, that means that uh, I couldn't get my compression tester in there. So I did what is called a relative compression test. And you stick your thumb in the hole or you stick your finger in there and turn the flywheel and you can feel, you know, the compression pushing against the thing or your thumb or whatever. And you'll hear it even when you let off, it'll pssst. It feels good. Number four is the same way. I couldn't get my compression tester on there. There's nothing wrong with the threads on my compression tester. So whoever puts these auto lights in or whatever they did, they kind of messed it up. Cause anyway, I just have to get a thread chaser. chaser. So I have to get a thread chaser, chase those threads and then I could do a true compression test, but I don't, I know that's not our problem. Our problem is these carbs. So let me show you. All right, well, these are the carburetors. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty dirty. I already tell that this is going to be a situation where I'm going to want to clean them in the ultrasonic. So that's, I bring them over here a lot of times get the old gas out of them and then uh, this will just twist off should I think I think so I can't remember well I'll be we'll get this off we'll get our little choke off so it goes like that but I like to break them down over here this gas kind of goes everywhere. But yeah, this has got to be our issue. I would say pretty dirty on the, I'm sure this fuel pump hasn't been addressed in a long time. So obviously you can kind of tell this would be number one or number two. And then of course this is That's number one. Anyway. So we'll just kind of leave this one. I want to get to this one. This is the one that's really kind of giving him the fit. So we're going to go ahead and get the fuel line off. And uh, that's pretty simple. I got a couple different pairs of pliers. Probably replace this fuel line. It looks, you know, it doesn't even have any fittings to it. So, yeah, it sucking air. Let's throw that in there. Um, this is going to be an adjustment. So, we can just go ahead and take that out because we're going to adjust all this later. And then to get your top carb off, there's a, a lever. I like to put the bolt back where I got it though. There's a, another lever that's on this carb that came off that's your top lever. And all it is is a pin, like it has a pin that goes through it. And you can adjust this part of it, uh, just so it just touches. I'll sh I can, I don't know, I may have to show that later. Anyway, that gets that one kind of broken down where I can get to my float bill because that's the one that I figure is the culprit. So 
maybe it's seven sixteenths. Yeah, yeah, it's not even a Harley on there. And that's got a little gasket right there. So it's probably gonna need need some uh, carb kits. Oh yeah, see how it's pu pushing all the way down? But I guess the trick is to know whether or not this is, because uh, it is pushing fuel out the jet. Um, I mean, we can, this is how you would adjust them. Like, you know, you get pushed down on that, and then it's going to be higher. Ah, I see what's wrong with it. Oh, I'll get a good picture of this one. All right, you don't see this a lot, but occasionally you will see this. The problem with this carburetor is that if you I don't I'm hoping this is going to come out if you notice inside that flow ball there's some liquid see it moving I'm hoping you guys can see that moving so we got a bad float on this one and I don't know if I got another float or not I'll look and see what I got, but you can see it almost a bubble. See it kind of move? Hopefully I'm getting a good shot of this. So... This was just filling up inside here. It wasn't doing its job, I don't think. Anyway, we'll pop that pin out, see if we can find us another float. I don't know if I got any or not. And, cause inside of our, here, it really doesn't look that bad. So just because I'll go ahead and pop the other one and see what it looks like. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. There's a little stuff in there. So you guys can see this one. This one looks pretty good. Like there's no liquid in there. There's nothing like that. But if we look at this other one. And we move it around. I mean you can see the liquid inside of it. Hopefully that all comes out. I'm going to get a little punch. Punch this out of here. See if we got if I got another float. Well, I had a another float, so I put a float in it, and uh, that'll fall down about where bowl is, and then when it closes, it'll be like this. So the way to test this is to put this back on. And see, I noticed that it's missing a gasket right here. So I looked in my carb kits, came up with this gasket, trying to keep it up there in place, like so. And then take our screw, which the gasket on our screw was okay. I mean, it wasn't great. But. Have a real good look at it. Remember, it's aluminum. 
anyway, um, so we're going to blow in this. Oh yeah, these are the ones that are the pumps. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna put these back on and I'm gonna uh, spray it down a little bit. But I'm gonna put these back on and see if that does the trick. Since this fellow's trying to save a few Benjamins, Maybe we'll do them on solid. And yeah, that wasn't a right gasket, but it's better than nothing. And this other has got all kind of fluid in it. I don't know. And then also, we'll see if I got enough fuel line. And I'm going to replace all this fuel line. So, let's take can of B12 and hose down the outside was that speck that's all it was So yeah, I want to do that, I guess, basically to both of them. So I'm just going to spray one down. I'll let you guys go. Um, I'm just kind of, you know, spraying out some of the spots. I know and that's why the other carb was like leaking because it was and gentle there. Don't go crazy because... plastic anyway let that one kind of dry out so this is just for the guys that don't think it takes very long and they want to know like you know why carb clean costs so much is because it takes a while to do this so you know like there should, has to be like levels of the carb clean it's like what are you going to do you're going to do a whole you know kind of deal or are you gonna do a partial and I'm sorry there is an airy needle air valve I don't know why I said there wasn't inside the bowl was really clean um, and we can get this one off and look at it it's filter one of them will be worse than the other one because you know the top where it comes in well I don't know these actually split right so they'll be about the same I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm I'm trying. <laughs> like Jim Burr. <laughs> Probably can't see any of this. So yeah, extra really long screw. So yeah, extra long screw. If I was rebuilding the fuel pumps on this, then I would that's what I would do. I would I would just kinda just be real careful with this plastic piece. See, that looks pretty clean, honestly. If it was real dirty, it would have to go to the ultrasonic. But I can already tell that the bottom carb, being that the float was allowing fuel to go in, and that was that was his problem, so no sense to go and go crazy on it. Like I said, this is a plastic piece. Sometimes the O-rings leak. Can't get them tight enough because then these little plastic buggers get sort of warped on you and they'll never seal 
even with that felt seal that's in there but click all right so there's that one and i think i did spray it here yeah now here's it and uh we could take this out again i don't think this is necessary i do want to replace this line so we could do this one at a time and i've got some line right here i have to get some uh just happen to have this sitting right here which is amazing but uh so like we could take and measure this out and cut it maybe and i got these little pliers So then there's that one. And this is just some of that uh, prime line you can get in advance. Looks like this is what maybe somebody tried to do before. I don't know. But we're going to put some little tie wraps around it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't think I have enough line for this. Let me see if I can find another piece of this. If not, I gotta get some more prime line. Okay, well, here's the aftermath of the repair. So like I said, fuel bowl down in the bottom seemed like it was, uh, you know, while well, we had water in it and we had gas in that in the float, so the float wasn't working right. So now it's kind of the moment of the truth. I've replaced these fuel lines and I've even put tie wraps on them and I think that now is the time that we hook up our fuel and see if we got any leaks see if we have any fuel coming out of our jet so this is a jet up here and um, right above it is our needle air air needle valve air fuel needle valve <laughs> I don't know anyway here's our repair you can see we got I had enough line uh, everything worked out great there. Uh, we're just going to reach down here and grab our fuel line. We're going to put it on this dude and see what we get if we get anything. May not get anything. Who knows? May have to just go ahead and do a clean. But I doubt it. I really believe that that's what it was. And, um, you know, both the, the top top float look fine these are hard you can't blow in them and make sure that uh, you know they're the needles are closing but we can pump it up and see if we get anything leaking anywhere All right, there we go. And we got us a leak. Okay, these old carburetors with the fuel pump on the side, I'll tell you what I do with them. They, get, they have this plastic, you know, and then there's a screen underneath here. And then generally these old gaskets, they don't, they don't do crap. So what you can do is get go to Home Depot. I guess Lowe's, uh, probably Ace Hardware, and you're gonna get what I think is a number 17 O-ring, and I'm gonna put it in here. See if I can't see what's up. Pretty sure it's a number 17. We have to go back. Okay, folks. So went out to Advance Auto Parts and picked up this pack of Dorman. Uh, this is for distributors. Uh, it's O-rings. Normally would go inside of a distributor. So that one, so it's an assortment. <clears throat> you see distributor O-ring assortment. This is gonna be, you know, 
gas and oil resistant. And uh, what we're going to end up with is these two O-rings right here, which is 1 and 5 sixteenths. And I've got an old 35 carburetor that is the exact same carburetor, basically. Let's see if I can get it down here where you guys can see. We're going to take this O-ring, and if you look, it fits really, really good in that group. And then we'll put the cap, and it'll seal it. It'll seal it really good. I'll, I'll get that on the motor. Now, I don't know why Mercury did this. It's got these little bitty edges. Why didn't they make this a whole thing? You know, I don't know. Um, we I could put my screen back in. Honestly, it's not necessary. It's just an obstruction. Um, I like redundant screens. I'm okay with that. But in this case, it's just not necessary. They should have made this this whole aluminum piece one piece. Uh, I don't know. You know, they had the screen. They didn't need to do this. They could have just used the one filter that they had. Uh, and then had an elbow on this and they'd, they'd been done. But no, we got we to gotta do this. So anyway, we're going to take this guy out there and stick it on that 50 that's out, outside. And hopefully that will seal it up. And uh, there's a little trick for you because sealing these carburetors is really hard to do. Like they just do not want to seal. Got our fuel bulb and squeeze it on it it's nice and firm not hard I mean it you want it firm you don't want it just all rock hard you can't squeeze it but you can see fuel is coming in here and we just want to look and make sure we don't have any leakage anywhere right now it's leaking out of the back of the carburetor because I don't have my gasket down but Anyway, that's all looking good. I'm going to put this all back together. And Okay, so if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Like, comment, share. Do all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.